Logan Paul just released the 99 original series, and as a professional photographer, I think it's only fair that I give my thoughts. So let's jump in. Work hard, rest often. Now this is a full 40 minute video, but I'm gonna cut it down so you're not watching like a full hour of me talking about this. I'm gonna cut it down to ones that really stand out for me. Just share my thoughts on the overall project. Now, if you're new around here, my name is Finn Badgley. I'm a commercial photographer as well as content creator, shooting primarily fashion, advertising, very commercial imagery. And that's kind of the standpoint that I'm gonna be coming from. But I know that this is an artistic personal project, so I'm not gonna be looking at it through the lens of commercial viability. That's not what I'm gonna be doing because that's not what it was intended for. Now, if you haven't seen or heard anything about this series, Logan Paul took a series of Polaroids that he narrowed down to 99 original photographs, really trying to create a ton of standout images that really tell a story and really will stop you in your tracks. He then sold these four NFTs, which we'll get into later, but let's just jump right in. Something about authenticity, trying to capture the most amazing moments on Polaroid camera. That this is real. Life isn't short, you just gotta do more. It's a, it's a good quote. Life Whoa, isn't short, you just gotta hi, do I'm more. Paul. Last year, between boxing, professional wrestling, and launching a variety of different businesses, I was able to pursue a passion project of mine. I picked up a Polaroid camera and traveled 84,000 miles. This feels kind of documentary esque, but in a way that I can appreciate that still like looking at the camera. It's like a self documentary. I like it. The project is nearly done. We have the community that we built and the people who have been following us on this journey on Discord is also incredible. About 50,000 people brought together by the same interest. Here's the thing 50,000 people is an insane amount to bring together via a photography project. And even though it's very, it's by a mainstream creator, seeing a actual photography project bring that many people together is i mean it, you can't call it not inspiring like a lot of these photos i haven't seen so i'm kind of pumped to see how these turn out because these setups are pretty intense these are some of those stories Kidnap my brother's dog for this photograph. His name is Thor. I love this little golden retriever. I think he's a little special, but that's what I love about him. And he of course, it's a cute dog. dog from my favorite animated film of all time. Up. Squirrel. So we put a bunch of balloons on him, and we took a bunch of photos. But to be honest, none of them turned out too great. It was way too windy. And yeah, the wind just kind of has them collar. more so down to the ground shack. rather than up. He slipped off into the distance. Don't worry. We recovered them and so we tried again I just wonder how they got them back though that would be thor's cute face and i got him. hung hanging out balloons in the background and when you say to someone it smells like up dog in here they say what's up dog and then you say not much how you doing anyways this is up dog okay that is a cute photo I love the thousand. Forty thousand. And we had a custom mermaid tail made for like three thousand dollars and we put the mermaid tail on her she basically couldn't move so me and george had to like drag her around the things the models do the for photos Oof, so when you gotta reshoot that is always the worst yeah, i didn't like the original takes sometimes, sometimes it just doesn't quite turn out right with my work i like the ability to interpret chaos and you see all these videos online on shore and so we put trisha face down kind of with her arms spread in what looks like a pretty desolate situation and get that perhaps, harsh sun you know, too was the last living mermaid <laughs> on earth we killed a mermaid for this project <laughs> that's actually insane i like it I took a lot of could have been a little more centered if i'm really nitpicking could have been just a little right right totally down the middle but you know what it's fine. I thought they were super cool, and I found out you could replicate these with a Polaroid camera. It's a long exposure picture, so you have the ability to capture light if you open the lens. Yeah, you like move the light around during a long exposure, and then it captures the whole thing. This is how you get the like light trails of traffic going by and stuff like that. Okay, classic. There's a point where I want to 
wanted to do this technique, uh, but I didn't because that's when it was really blowing up on Instagram and Flickr back when that was a thing. Um, and then I decided it was overdone and it kind of cooled down over a couple years. So seeing it come back in this form, I'm all right with it. That shot off the top created like a nine and then it reflected on the bottom also a nine, 99 originals. Huh. You know what? If it works, it works. That, that's just a happy coincidence. Damn. Tyron Woodley this weekend. It's crazy. Hasn't changed a bit. I haven't changed one goddamn thing. So we are in Ohio. Uh, you gotta have to wear the fuck out. Oh, ho, ho. That's a four last photo. every day creating the most insane photo you can like i will put weeks into one project and to do it like every day back to back to back is insane that's when you need like a one wheel or like a segway or something so you can like be going back with them or like hanging out of the back of a truck Something like that would be cool, you know, but Felides. that's a dope photo. It might be Ephelides. And I had the tiny Polaroid because I broke the bigger one the day before. I broke like 25 Polaroids. This whole I mean, yeah, doing these operation, intense photo shoots, you would break so Polaroid. many, like, because the, the build quality isn't the same, but that's... I'm glad that he didn't overuse this technique though, the Polaroid and a Polaroid, like it could be so easily overdone, but using it for just one is solid. It's a lot of pigeons. Not bad. 200 albino alligators in the world, and we had one and put a crock in its mouth. So, if you know me, I love puns. You get it? <laughs> this is hilarious to me. Like, I know it's a little silly, and animals in general working with animals is hard. Working with animals is one thing, but that as a th idea is absolutely hilarious to me contrast to the hard sun too with the black and white of the yeah the irony of the photo i i think is awesome and i loved how this came out this was one of the times we didn't have an idea because while we were shooting this project everything is so back to back to back i mean yeah when you're going super fast like this sometimes you're just like oh we just got to get there and like we'll figure it out later i've even had things like that where you're like okay this is the location we got like something but that's the word i'm looking for like sexy almost i'm getting the access to all these kind of things it's something that when you're in a unique position to be able to do that like it would be a lot harder necessarily for you know, you're more average photographer to to get away with this type of thing. Um, my light also died, but it's fine. Okay, this one I really like. It's very simple, but very... I like it. And the quality of the Polaroids being like... Because they're Stonehenge was so close being a little lower quality me, and on I, film, I there's a certain substance to it that so you can't help but love. I mean, some of the photos are really like okay, but some of them really are killer. Like, oh god, I almost broke my hand on one of these back in like eighth grade. It came down, there's a metal pillar in the center of it, and I aimed too high. I'm used to, at the time in my parents' house, we had a speed bag hung up, the type that you would do that kind of thing with. And I aimed higher because I was used to it being above my head versus at eye level. So I punched square onto the pillar with my knuckle. If I punched with the force that I have now, I probably would have broke my hand. At the time, again, I was like eighth grade, so I didn't completely demolish my hand it's hurt for like a week after but thankfully i didn't break it 
So I don't think this is going to end well. No, this is what I'm talking about. Yep, 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 yep. See, this is what almost happened to me. Those things, oh, they will get you. That is rough. That is brutal. Yeah, mine didn't swell up quite like that. It was pretty swollen, but luckily it wasn't anything insane like that. Oh my god. came with this idea in suit supply. It was so random, they brought us an entire bottle of vodka for like three of us. So we just got drunk and bought some suits, one of which was this blue suit that I bought. I mean, I do appreciate a good suit. He needs a peak lapel though. Pe the one, the point up a little higher. It's a little more sophisticated. Stands out a little more. There's eight different colors in the past. So when you shoot the photo, you never know what color you're going to get. And the Blue Lagoon in general is, is breathtaking. Here I am looking like an idiot with no pants on and a suit at the Blue Lagoon. Everyone else is running their business. But the way this photo I mean, sometimes for a cool photo, you just got to look like an idiot. Like, you got to look really out of place. And then it turns out really good. I mean, so far, honestly, this is one of my favorites. Like, the way all the blue came together and like the absurdity of it now okay don't get me wrong i love the human body and i love tasteful nudity sometimes i feel like it can border on you know it's like sexualization but it but the human body isn't inherently sexual, and if you don't look at it as, oh, there's this hot girl, she's naked, doing this thing, then you're able to create an artistic way that doesn't have that kind of sexualized gaze to it. Like, okay, like, this actually works, and I feel like this is what's needed to balance out, you know, like the topless girl on the motorcycle, the girl in a bikini with the house and stuff like if you're gonna shoot naked women you have to have naked men as well in my opinion otherwise it just becomes a oh let's shoot a bunch of naked women because they're attractive and i'm a boy and i like that like you gotta balance it out and you have to make it tasteful so i appreciate that Like the all the white against the all black landscape is sick. Sometimes these miracles happen, but this was absolutely an amazing Ooh, It's a dope shot. Like again, it's not anything that's necessarily like commercial or really it, but it's as a photograph itself it, it just really stands out. And I like it for that reason. So we had this $400 giant stuffed penguin and we thought it matched the aesthetic of the plane nicely. And as I'm taking these photos, you know, they were I, cool. It's a cool plane. It's like, you know, I don't know how I feel about it. Like, it's weirdly that kind of, like, slightly absurd doesn't make any sense in the world. But at the same time, I'm like, really? Right behind the plane, everyone starts screaming, Rainbow, Rainbow, Rainbow. I put it on low exposure, managed to snap, like, three photos before the rainbow disappeared. I don't know. I get it. Flightless. The flightless bird. The rainbow does help it, I guess. And here I am at the front of the boat trying to capture them as soon as they come Yeah, you'd have to be higher up, though, to get it right. Like, because otherwise you're just going to get the fins. And so as an artist, again, with the time limit on this project, I had to just take what we got. This is the best we got. We tried to capture an orca. You know what? And in the photo we selected, you could see the fin of an orca. That's why I put whale question mark and truthfully it was you know what me, yeah sometimes that happens i've been there you you At this point, my have an idea for a shot and it just doesn't lost. quite work but you know what just you make the best out of it i guess mentally. he looked so bored he's like <laughs> all of these i put my life into each image anyone can look at and, and have something to think or feel something because you know what i feel like that could be like an album cover though oh my god i mean that would probably that probably sold when bored apes were like at their peak 
So like that just worked really well for the NFT space. I gotta give him credit there. Like, well played. Well played. Put in the field at my ranch and call it broken world record. You get it? <laughs> for the joke, this might be one of my favorite ones just because that's hilarious. Girlfriend Shauna on top of my razor with a shotgun with a giant bunny mask on. It's reminding me of very like GTA style, like, you know, guns, sex, masks, robbery, the whole thing. But that. When you're looking down the barrel of a shotgun and the other side is death. Okay, you know what though? That this is actually works. So that I can. Anything we do on ranch is like my happy. <laughs> I got nothing to say. <laughs> I mean, it's very, um, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, whole, in like one photo. Um, but I feel like it captures a point in his life, so I can appreciate it for that. All right, that is properly absurd. Like, to send it... I mean, the... The amount of money that would go into create... Into, like, creating some of these is insane. So much so that, like, you almost need to be this level of... Celebrity, or have this amount of capital behind you to create some of these ideas or even the project as a whole granted i'm sure it's made him way more than he put into it but still perfectly in the center with this really cool pose but what the fuck is that oh. the frame was orange almost the exact same color as the light when it showed up in the photo people have killed people with pictures like these bro the girl standing perfectly in the center it's reflected on the top and bottom like a bullseye on a dartboard in miraculous okay you know what made one of the coolest photos i've ever seen taken on a polaroid camera this is one of those photos that yeah it's about the photo and that is like that is actually a great photo there are some where it's like uh you know but that is actually like actually fired you never came back for me. Don't miss your heroes. <laughs> when I have a photo in mind and I come so close to getting it, but I fall short, it destroys me. So I didn't do it, and now I don't get what I wanted. Now I'm heartbroken. And in my angst, I, mean... I was feeling reckless. The next day, we went on top of a building, a beautiful skyline in New York City. I climbed over the rail. My new security guard's freaking out. He's horrified. I lay down and just start snapping away Polaroids. But regardless, I mean, I the thing there Tarantino is you, you missed That's one shot, but it redirected you Tarantino into that. that. And while it is a very reckless thing to do, and I don't exactly necessarily condone that, I like the Polaroid it did redirect you in a way that you wouldn't get that shot without it. So... Yes, you miss Tarantino and it probably sucked. And But if you look at it from a positive perspective, that experience, that photo, that story, you wouldn't have without it. You know, like, oh, I shot Quentin Tarantino. Okay, great. But then to say you were going to, you missed, and then you... Uh, like, I don't know which one would be better, but... I think you got to look on the bright side here and you it still worked and you still got to albeit risky shot listen I've done some risky things for a photo so I cannot I don't recommend doing risky things for photos and potentially getting yourself hurt but at the same time I've done risky things granted I always do try to do it with safety in mind but sometimes photos like that you don't get really get without it the coolest thing you're doing. At the fight, I saw you taking photos. The sparkle in your eye about this. Uh-oh, he loves this one. The original of the day today, original number five, is a photograph of Gary and I that we took in New York City, and I want to gift it to Gary Vaynerchuk as a thank you for everything he's done in my life. I mean, Gary, Gary V, I've taken a lot of inspiration from him, so I can... Let's build this project. That's dope. It also like shows connection. 
I mean, some of the, like, the, the amount of access that you have, like, to do a, to do a project like this and not use that to your advantage, like, you, to get these insane photos, you, you have to use everything you got, all the connections, everything, and I so respect that, like, if I had the, it, like, I'd be doing the same stuff, like, oh my god. I figured that I was in South Africa and I was probably not going to come back for a while and I had to ditch the entire group because no one else wanted to go on the safari but I knew that there would be amazing animals there that you only see in National Geographic and I had the opportunity to capture some wow. Polaroids. That is actually a beautiful... I was like, oh, it's just going to be a regular photo of animals but that is actually a beautiful shot. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, the amount of detail and planning and like you'd have to do that thing over so many times because you wouldn't get it right the first time like the shape wow both my grandfathers okay you know what no that's one of those situations where it really works for it because it's an homage to that original he began as my boxing coach when i first went to fight grandfather figures wow that's a really special connection and then he got cancer just devastating you know where to go so in the interim of this project, when I was not focused on my physical fitness, he got his treatment. That's fantastic. No, I, I have a lot of respect for that. I love photographing people that are really close to your life. Like, there are certain people in my life that I, I, I always want to photograph them properly. And I'm always photographing them candidly to get like that one photo where, I don't know, it just, you, you, you get them. I think that's what happened there, and that's... Damn. I mean, it shows the amount of... All facets of life. The ups and the downs, and... I mean, the, uh, an extended photography project like this really... It goes beyond just photos. Photographing it on a Polaroid, too. It just feels right. Like... soldiers are floating. And I wanted to go on it rented out the entire thing and brought along the 3,000 Polaroids that I had already taken. My goal was to throw all of them in the air when we were at the peak of the parabola, weightless, and I'd be floating around in the center of my work, taking a Polaroid. Oh. And wow. The entire plane was completely silent. We could not believe it. That's... Yeah, that's like something out of an OK, Co OK Go video. It's one of those things where I can describe it as much as but I want. But that looks experience it, sick. There's nothing like it. And you know, people would do things like this, and I've done it where they'll this repeat sort of an object reality over reality and over again to like do a composite, but to actually do it the epitome of this project. with 3,000 photos. A photo that on paper makes no fucking sense and shouldn't be possible, but it is. This is 99. That's insane. That's actually insane. And it is a good one to leave till the end. As a professional photographer, what do I think of that? <sighs> you know, a, some there were some photos in there that, you know, they're... <sighs> you can take them or leave them, and I think it's not... The stories behind them make them. And there's certain photos that the photo itself really stands out. You know, it's one of those things that if you put a book with it, you'd put the story of each photo with it, just like is done here with this documentary. Like, in order to fully appreciate it, you need the stories. Like, like I don't know, I keep coming back to the Orca photo. That photo in and of itself, if you just saw it, you're like, that, that's not good. That, why, why, why is that in there? But the story itself and how it came together, and even it being like a bit of a joke with the whale, question mark, it, it still can stand on its own. Now, is it the strongest photo? Are some of these the strongest? No, but it, they, you know, they help to emphasize the ones that are really insane photos. And I so respect 
the fact that this was all done on a Polaroid, this would not be a cheap project to make. And especially doing the level of ideas that are here, you would need a lot of those connections to be able to accomplish something like this. And you know, as photographers, especially when you see on the internet, I think we all obsess over gear and what camera is better than this and this is better and the newest thing and the highest quality, the sharpest photo, but all of these were taken on a Polaroid. And the quality out of it isn't... <laughs> Uh, you know, the the quality isn't great. Like, if you were to pixel peep, you would be tearing it apart. But they don't have to be technically brilliant. You know, there's not a whole bunch of lighting. Some of these were lit really intensely. And, but it's the techniques. It's the eye. It's the ideas. And if you shot these digitally, it would not have the same impact. I'm telling you that right now. This project would not have the same impact if you shot it digital. There would also be, instead of 3,000 photos, like 40,000. But if you're worried about the best camera, the newest gear, any of that, this should be a sign to you that it does not matter. Your eye, your brain matters most. And what you use should just be what speaks to you. And it doesn't have to be the greatest thing out there. I said it. I said it. To actually set out and accomplish a photography project like this, like professional photographers aren't doing things like this. You know, I'm starting to work on a, like a larger book that I'm looking at years down the road. And this was put together over a couple years, but still to shoot it all on a Polaroid to you know, it's like when Ansel Adams would shoot at everything on like an 8x10 view camera or something like that. It's something that not, it's something that nobody else is doing. And it's something that you don't think of Logan Paul as a photographer. And some people might be like, oh, he's not a real photographer. Oh, these aren't like real photos, whatever. But the level of execution that's here is beyond what I see from a lot of photographers out there. And honestly, as photographers, I think we should take something from this. I think this should be a message to us to, if we have these ideas, if there's something we want, what we want, go after it and take that photo, make that photo possible. Because that's exactly what Logan did. And the result is insane. And the fact of making it an NFT just further proves to what this technology is capable of and how influential it will be. It's, it, it's changing the art world. And if you're a photographer out there thinking, oh, my work's not good enough, this, that, the other thing, like keep at it, keep pushing, push the boundaries. And you look at it, 3,000 photos to get 99. It's like we all take so many photos to get that one. And I think it just goes to show that pushing through is worth it. And you can create some really incredible art from it. I don't own any of these personally. I've thought about it, not gonna lie. Um, but they, they do, I don't know, I actually, I gotta say, I feel inspired after this. Like, it just makes me want to go and shoot more crazy ideas. And I'm always trying to push my own boundaries of what can I do? What can I accomplish? And I think it's only going to push me to do that more and to push the boundaries more. And hopefully it does the same for you. Like, you can be cynical about it and be like, oh, he has all this money. He's famous. He has all these connections. That's how he's able to do all this. Yeah, sure. But... What can you do with what you have? What can what connections do you have that you can work off of to make? And it doesn't have to be the most insane photos. It can be whatever speaks to you. Logan is a very over-the-top person, so creating over-the-top crazy photos is natural. That makes sense. 
And each of these is more of an art piece. It's like I said, it's not a commercial thing. I mean, granted, the the amount of money generated from this is insane, but it just goes to show you that there is a place for photography in the emerging in this new emerging world. Like people are like, oh, is photography dead with Instagram and this and that, the other thing? And I got to say it's not. And this proves that even more because look at this project and look what it's done. Sure, the digital landscape is cha changing things, but this is a project that stands on its own photographically. And it's something that I think will only influence more. Like, I think this is bigger than maybe even Logan realizes. And it, you know, I've not, all, and I haven't always been a big fan of Logan. Like, a lot of people weren't. But, this, I think, has made me change my opinions on him. From my professional standpoint, well done. Well done. I, you know, I got nothing else to say. That's it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the button to be notified for all future videos. And work hard. Rest often. And I'll see you on the next one. I'm going to go take some photos.